Dragon Quest is a JRPG franchise known for its grand scale and explorative world. To have a game like that, you need a soundtrack that matches exactly that, not only in quality, but in grandness. Today, I wanted to explore how the soundtrack accomplishes exactly that. Dragon Quest is generally known as the first JRPG game, and it set the precedent for all the games that follow it in the genre. It was inspired by a lot of Western role-playing games such as Dungeons and & Dragons and Ultima. Koichi Sugiyama, the composer for the game, was already established as a celebrity composer and a pop producer for numerous groups in anime. He started working with a company named as Enix, now known as Square Enix, on multiple game projects with one of them being Dragon Quest. Sugiyama being trained and influenced by classical music led the Dragon Quest soundtrack to mostly contain classical orchestral music as its foundational sound. Even when the first games came out, it was just classical music using 8-bit tune sounds. Being the first JRPG, not only did Dragon Quest set the precedent for gameplay, but it set the precedent for soundtrack and music as well. A lot of the musical JRPG cliches we know today was set by Koichi Sugiyama during his time making the soundtrack for Dragon Quest. One example of this is how most JRPG village themes were passed around. Sugiyama was the first one to implement this within a JRPG franchise. <laughs> One composer that I can list that's been inspired by this directly is Nobuo Uematsu. His music can seem to take direct templates from Koichi Sugiyama and how he's laid out the soundtrack for Dragon Quest. Let's take a look at how some of this music complements Dragon Quest and the theme of the game. Taking a look at this main overture for Dragon Quest, we can really see how this theme conveys something grand and nostalgic, especially with how this theme starts off with this brass fanfare and this call and response type of style. The short staccato accents help to gain our attention for what's coming next and then we enter into the main motif of the song. The large interval leap in the beginning helps to establish something grand. Take a look if I change the interval leap in the beginning to something smaller. It just doesn't have the same starting impact. After we're done with that pickup, we enter into the main part of the march. Marches historically have been used in the military as a way of communicating between the different positions of the platoons and also to keep the rhythm of the soldiers as they march across the field. Using such an old style representation of militant culture helps to bring that feeling of setting off into war or a battle, which is perfect for a medieval game style like Dragon Quest, which is about heading to war or some type of significant battle. We start off in this compound meter to help elevate the capturing of something important or the arrival of something important, as the 6-8 time tends to invoke a sense of boldness and has a common history of being used in fanfares for this purpose. After we get done with the introduction, we settle into a 4-4 or common time to imply that the important person is now here. The first three or four measures represent the main motif of this theme. Tsukiyama takes that one motif and plays with it enough to create a singable and memorable song, but each variation is different enough to not get too repetitive. After he's done with this strong quarter note entrance, he gives us a little bit of syncopation just to flare up the rhythmic sensibility of this motif a little bit more. Throughout the song, the motif carries through with two different sections, with one being more strong and on the downbeat, while the other one having just a little bit of syncopation just to have more interest. He tends to mix and match where the different parts of the phrase are placed just to subvert expectations a little more. Check out how different the song sounds when I put everything in the same exact place. And even when we get to that D minor over there, instead of continuing the phrase length, 
Sugiyama cuts it in half and just repeats the phrase again to further again subvert your expectations. <laughs> To help further imply this, Sugiyama switches between different keys within a song. A lot of these chords used aren't native to the key of C major and will be classified as secondary dominant chords. They're mostly used to add a bit more direction to the harmony and to give a more unexpected sound. But even if he switches keys in the harmony, the melody stays in the same key. There was only one instance of the melody momentarily leaving the key and that was during our first key change. Listen to how different the song would sound if I made all the harmony diatonic and to the key of C exactly. It starts to sound like a totally different song and that's because it is. Having these secondary dominants going through different keys can really help connect with Dragon Quest, with how you're going on adventure and you're going through these different paths and you're, there's no really one path to take. It's kind of related to how Sugiyama uses these different keys to get to where he really wants to go. Together with the military style march and a variation on theme go together perfectly with Dragon Quest and the start of an unclear but grandiose adventure. The Nautica theme is a very beautiful theme that's supposed to capture the gracefulness of land and the ocean. The slower tempo helps to give us the feeling of something more mystical and it gives us the time to appreciate the tasteful and sweet orchestration. We start off in a key of F, but as you'll see later, the key starts to imply other directions. If you look at the first four measures, all of the notes in the melody belong to a particular scale called the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is a five note scale made from intervals of fifths. The interval of a perfect fifth is one of the most consonant and stable sounding interval to be played and had in Western music. Having only five notes also helps the pentatonic scale be more harmonically ambiguous. The less notes we have to represent the key of the scale, the more ambiguous we tend to sound in that key. And because of that, that's why Sugiyama, even though we're in a key of F, he uses the pentatonic from the key of C. These scales only have a one note difference to them, and that's why C major pentatonic can also work in F major as a key. If I were to change the first four bars into F major pentatonic, this is how it would sound. After we get past the first couple of chords, we get to this A minor, which seems like a normal move in the key of F major, but he again subverts our expectations by going to this D7. This D7 is also working as a secondary dominant, so Sugiyama is again switching key centers a little bit throughout the song. In my head, using this D7 implies that there's some type of G key center coming up soon. That's because usually A minor to D7 is what we consider a 2-5-1 cadence in the key of G, and it's the most common cadence you will find in Western music. Then he drops down to this A7 and to this B flat major chord. There's two reasons why I think this A7 leads so good into this B flat major chord, and one of them being because B flat major is a very similar key center to D minor. A7 is the 5 of D minor, so with those two key centers being very heavily related, A7 can also lead itself well into a sound of B flat major, which can also imply a D minor underneath of it, even though it's just kind of a different sound. It's almost like having a dish of food, and even though the main dish calls for chicken as a particular protein, you still substitute it for 
might may be beef and even though it's a different dish altogether and it tastes different at the foundational core it still has the same flavor to it and the second reason being that this a7 just voice leads really good into this b flat major chord almost all of the chord tones are almost just a half step away from going to a b flat major chord and anytime that you have good voice leading it will just create some type of good resolution at the end of the day but regardless of how or why he chose to go to this b flat major chord as the four it only serves as a vehicle to get us to this minor four chord, which is a very magical chord to have in a major key. Here's an example from Earth, Wind & Fire. To love was all we could do. Then we're led into the 5 for the key of F, so we kind of want to resolve home, but it's a 5 sus chord. So we have this ability to almost resolve home, but kind of lead into other places as well. But again, instead of going home, we head to the 3 chord, which is also known as the median chord. The 3 is a very common substitution that we use in Western music as, instead of using a 1, we use the 3 just to give us a different playfulness of the harmony. But in the melody over this three chord, we suddenly enter the realm of, of F major scale instead of using a C pentatonic, which helps implies that sooner or later we're about to head into where we want to get. Listen to how it sounds if he just stuck with C pentatonic instead. Then the last four bars finally set us up to get back home where we've been trying to get to this whole time. Just within 16 and 32 bars, Koichi Sugiyama was able to subvert our expectations and finally lead us into a long-awaited climax. Both of these songs contain the spirit of Dragon Quest, which is about a grandiose big adventure and leading us onto different paths. If you like this video, go watch my other video about Sonic and his music and how it relates to his individuality as a character.